The successful offensive operation of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region, during which dozens of settlements came under the control of the Ukrainian army and the transfer of the war to the territory of the Russian Federation, were able to sober up even Russian state propaganda. Pro-Kremlin top propagandist Vladimir Solovyov, who has been telling Russians every day since the beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine about the strength of the Russian army, the superiority of the Russian Federation in new types of weapons, new assault groups ready to easily capture Ukrainian cities one after another, has suddenly changed his rhetoric in his latest broadcasts and is now focusing on the strength of the Ukrainian army. Dialogue.ua reports. To all those who say that the enemy is weak, demoralized, that he has nothing, stop lying, the propagandist said in one of his recent broadcasts, apparently forgetting that all these narratives were regularly heard from his lips and the lips of the participants in his propaganda show. It is also worth paying attention to the reaction of the regular guest of propaganda broadcasts, State Duma Deputy Andriy Gurulev and other so-called experts to the above words of Solovyov. They lowered their eyes and were plunged into sadness. Valery Ryabik, a Ukrainian military expert and development director of the information and consulting company Defense Express, noted that the operation in the Kursk region changed the strategic initiative in favor of the Ukrainian armed forces. Closing the cauldron, which is blocked on all sides by obstacles for Russian troops operating in the area, is an important strategic achievement. In particular, the area is bounded by the Seam River from the west and north, and Ukrainian units advancing through Kursk through the Kursk region with the main vector to Rilsk from the east. The Ukrainian armed forces control over the village Krasnuk Tiabriskoy prevents Russian troops from advancing in this direction. Ukrainian border guards are holding the defense from the south, explained Ryabik. According to the military expert, up to 3,000 Russian troops may be trapped in the cauldron in the Kursk region, an additional territory with a total area of 700 square kilometers with linear dimensions of 40 kilometers from east to west and 20 kilometers from south to north is already controlled, at least remotely, by the Ukrainian Defense Forces. This creates additional opportunities for further advancement and implementation of the strategic tasks currently being carried out by the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region, noted Ryabik on the Espresso TV channel. The Defense Express expert also added that the Ukrainian armed forces operation in the Kursk region is progressing successfully. U.S. policy permits Ukraine to retaliate to defend itself against Russian attacks originating from the border region of the Sumy region, which includes Russia's Kursk region. However, the Pentagon is not fully clear on how the Kursk operation aligns with the strategic objectives on the battlefield for the Ukrainian armed forces, states Pentagon spokesperson Sabrina Singh. Singh confirmed that U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is scheduled to have another conversation with his Ukrainian counterpart, Rustam Yumarov, in the coming days. This discussion is expected to include the Ukrainian offensive operation in the Kursk region. The Pentagon spokesperson stated that the U.S. lacked a clear understanding of Kiev's objectives in the Kursk operation but referenced President Volodymyr Zelensky's call for a buffer zone. According to Singh, establishing such a zone would require constructing several defensive lines, and the Pentagon reportedly has questions about how the Kursk operation aligns with the strategic objectives on the battlefield for the Ukrainian armed forces. Singh noted that U.S. policy allows Ukraine to retaliate to defend itself from Russian attacks originating from this border region, which includes the Kursk region and the border of the Sumy region. So they are defending themselves from Russian attacks from these regions, Singh said. Additionally, Singh announced new U.S. defense aid packages for Ukraine, though she did not provide further details. As the situation grows more complicated in the Kursk region, the simultaneous completion of Operation in Korenevo and the Glushkovsky district will place Putin in a precarious operational stalemate. There are signs that these issues could be resolved by the end of this week or early next week, Ukrainian military expert and the analyst of the information resistance group Alexander Kovalenko shared his views on his Telegram channel. 
He said that while Russian federal level propaganda focuses on the advance of Russian troops in the Toretsk Pokrovsk direction and Putin's visit to Azerbaijan, local war correspondents and bloggers are sounding alarms about the crisis unfolding in the Kursk region, and rightly so. The once convenient logistics route to the Belgorod region is now compromised due to Ukraine's fire control over key supply arteries. The Glushkovsky district is increasingly isolated and efforts to use pontoon bridges as a workaround are proving ineffective as these are more vulnerable and less efficient than fixed bridges. The Russian forces in Glushkovsky find themselves with limited time to retreat to the northern bank of the Sim River. Despite this, the Russian command is attempting to move logistics and reinforcements, further complicating the situation, Kovalenko pointed out. The Ukrainian operation is opening a path to Rilsk, just 15 kilometers from key logistical hubs. Ukrainian forces could potentially cut off these hubs with fire control without needing a full-scale city assault. Rilsk, divided by the Seam River with only two bridges, presents a significant vulnerability for the Russian forces. By September the 6th, one month after the beginning of the Kursk operation, it is anticipated that Ukrainian forces will control up to 2,000 square kilometers in the Kursk region, greatly expanding their operational area. Meanwhile, Russian forces may still be struggling to make significant progress in Pokrovsk, the expert added. Putin faces a critical decision, continue focusing on Pokrovsk, which could lead to greater losses in Kursk or shift his strategy. The expected bet on Pokrovsk could exacerbate Russian losses in Kursk, outweighing any minor gains since early 2024. Ukraine's strategy for 2024, primarily defensive with selective counter-attacks, aims to exhaust the enemy rather than hold territory. Since August the 6th, the strategy has shifted. For every square kilometer of Ukrainian land captured, Ukrainian forces are advancing multiple kilometers into Russian territory. While the Russian army might manage to replenish the personnel losses, they are increasingly struggling with territorial losses.